today, let's talk about how each season has a beginning, a middle, and an end. As you know, I like to break my work up on the homestead. I don't like to be overwhelmed. I can't put too many things on my plate at once because then I won't get anything done and it makes me feel unproductive. So I break up the tasks and activities that I need to do based on the time of year. And living on the homestead, I have come to realize that even though we have four seasons, each season basically has three parts, a beginning, a middle, and an end. As long as you're not in zones, say, 8 through 10, um, here are some pretty basic ways that you can tell what part of the season that you're in. Early winter is pretty simple. There is pretty much no plant growth to speak of, and your temps are below 40 degrees for the most part, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, whenever you reach the middle of winter, your temps are starting to freeze, your ground temps um, are getting cold, and the ground soil is starting to freeze intermittently. Our air temps have reached below freezing, and there is still no plant growth. And I don't know about you, but for me, growing is one of the best parts of homesteading so it's really hard for me in winter to just see everything covered in white even though it's really pretty i really like plants better now in late winter we still have no grass growth but we will see some cold hardy plants starting to emerge from the soil getting ready for spring the soil temperature typically stays 40 degrees or below at this point However, you will see like surface thaws on the ground wherever it's sunny. So you know that the sun is starting to warm things up and we are definitely in late winter. And then your air temps in late winter start to rise above freezing. And so this is the time when I get really excited because I know that spring is just around the corner. Now in early spring, our cool season grasses are starting to grow. The ground temp is above 40 degrees, and if you live near farming, you will start to see grain being planted. With or without a calendar, I always know whenever it's spring by the air temperature and by the farmers around me. Now, by the middle of spring, your cool season grasses should be really big. The uh, temperature of your soil should be above 50 degrees and the farmers around you will be planting corn. At this time, I start my garden. I start putting my bulbs that couldn't winter back into the ground and I really start in my yard. The middle of spring is my absolute favorite part of the year. Late spring, right before summer starts, the farmers are going to start planting their alfalfa. Your soil temp is going to be above 60 degrees, and all those cool season grasses are going to be mature, grown all the way big and beautiful out on your homestead. And that brings us to early summer. Right after the very last frost is basically when you know that early summer has started. Farmers have already cut the first alfalfa harvest and our soil temps are going to be above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In the middle of summer, temps are going to be over 75 degrees. All of those new warm weather grasses that are growing are starting to explode. And you can definitely tell that things are getting hot on the homestead. In late summer, you're going to notice air temps are going to drop in the evenings. Whenever you go outside to have a little bonfire in the evening, it's not going to be really hot and muggy and sweaty anymore. It's going to start to be cooler. Also, in late summer, you're going to see your warm weather grasses are going to start slowing down their growth rate, and those cool weather grasses are going to start exploding from the ground. Early fall, those warm weather grasses are going to completely stop growing, and the cool weather grasses are going to continue to rise. 
This is going to add such a beautiful array of colors to your homestead with all of the fall leaves and grasses changing around you. And your soil temps are going to be about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or below. And that brings us to the middle of fall, which is basically the very first hard frost. That's kind of how I gauge when the middle of fall is. That first hard frost comes. I know my vegetable garden is done for the year completely. Them cold hardy vegetables, I do not live in a zone where they will last all winter. So I know that if I do not have them out of the ground by then, that I need to get them out of the ground and go get them to the chickens because they're no longer good for us. Your air temps are gonna be about 60 degrees or below Fahrenheit and your cool season grasses, they're gonna kinda stop growing at this point. And finally, that brings us to late fall. You're going to have freezing air temps in the evenings whenever it's cooler and your daytime soil temp is going to be about 50 degrees or below. Understanding that with the four seasons comes these different parts of each season, the beginning, the middle, and the end, will really help you to plan out what you're doing on the homestead and not get overwhelmed with all the tasks that you have to perform. Share with me your thoughts. I would love to know what is your favorite season, what's your favorite time of that season, and what's your favorite thing to do during that time. For me, it's the middle of spring whenever I can finally start planting. Let's talk about exactly what is early winter. Yesterday we talked about while there really is only four seasons, that each season basically has three parts. A beginning, a middle, and an end. And since we're in winter, I thought that it would be only fitting to talk about early winter. Early winter is when the plants stop growing and the soil temps fall under 40 degrees. You may see some animals getting ready for winter, finding places to hibernate for the winter. Snow may fall, but it will melt and disappear just as fast as it came. As soon as the ground freezes, there is no doubt winter is upon us. Personally, our homestead uses the freshly fallen snow during this time of year to see what the wildlife is doing. We'll follow tracks, see where um, animals are eating, drinking, where their dens are. We'll see what their patterns are throughout the season so that way we know whenever hunting time comes, the best places to set up camp and get ourselves so dear. So use this freshly fallen snow to set yourself up and track some animal movements so that way you can fill your freezer up with fresh meat. Also in early winter, presumably you want to start this as soon as early winter begins, but you can also do it in between the snow melting and falling and melting and falling as it typically does this time of year but you're gonna to wanna to use leaves, hay, straw, or other bedding to cover your water lines if you have any, or your flower beds and your garden to get it ready for the harsh winter weather. So basically, that's how you know early winter is upon us. I have a lot of great tips for you for things that I do during the early winter, how I break things up on my homestead to get things done throughout the year and not become overwhelmed. So please be sure to stay tuned for my future videos. Share your thoughts with me. What are some ways that you know early winter is upon you? We live in zone six. So our homestead, it's pretty much about soil temps, air temps, the snow, so tell me some other ways that you know that early winter is upon your homestead. Let's talk about what we need to do to our garden in early winter. Early winter comes upon us before we even know it's here. We're so busy in the spring and the summer and the fall getting our chores done that boom, snow's on the ground and we're like, what is up with this? Our garden is such an essential part of our homestead. It provides our family and us with 
basically all of the food or at least three-fourths of the food that we're going to be eating throughout the rest of the year. So let's talk a little about what we need to do to our gardens in early winters to secure a successful harvest for the following year. First, start gathering all those wood ashes from your stoves and your fireplaces. There are so many uses for ashes. They are not just for chicken baths in your chicken coop. Grab your ashes and take them out to your garden. Spread them everywhere that you're going to be planting next year. But don't just stop at your garden. While we're out there with the ashes, put them in your flower beds too. These are going to add potassium to your soil and those are things that plants need. If you live in a more mild climate than us, early winter is a great time to start your cold hardy vegetables. Be sure to use some sort of cover to help protect it from the harsh elements that would damage or kill your plant before it has a chance to succeed. If you're like me and you live in Illinois or in a colder climate, we cannot start our plants. So you need to make sure that you live in an environment where early winter will allow you to start those cold hardy plants. Our garden should already be done weeded. It should just be bare ground, nothing there. I normally weed and till my garden at the end of the season to get it ready for the next year. Then as I go out in early winter and really throughout winter and I spread my ashes from the fireplace and the stove in the garden, it has a nice broken up ground in order for those ashes to penetrate and get into so that way that potassium can go all the way down to where the roots are for my plants are going to be. Share with me your tips and tricks for what you do in early winter in your garden. I would love to see your videos, your photos, and read your comments so please put them down below. What to do to your pasture in early winter. Getting things done on the homestead can be overwhelming. And while we have four seasons, I really break my seasons down into three parts. The beginning, the middle, and the end. In past videos, we talked about all the indicators of the three parts of each season. And since we're in winter, we talked about what exactly early winter is. So now I want to share with you a, a little series of tip videos that I have of the things that I do and my husband does and my family does on our homestead and during early winter. Today, let's talk about what to do to your pasture in early winter. When early winter is upon you, you're definitely going to know it. And it is now time to get those seasonal chores done. Our pasture provides our animals with protection from predators, and it provides them with food to eat. So let me share with you the things that I do to my pasture in early winter to keep my animals safe and fed. Something that you want to do is check your fencing perimeter. Now, I want to say this is something you should continually do because this checking your fence for your pasture is almost like a weekly job. My husband goes around once a week, walks the pasture, looks at the fence line, or he drives a four-wheeler and or the truck or what you know, he checks the fence line of our pasture and he goes around and he makes sure there's no holes, there's no damage, there nothing, no limbs from trees have fallen on it, so making an out a place where my animals can get out. Go out there and continue checking the perimeter fence line for your pasture. If you have larger livestock, they will start to leave the pasture at this time and move in closer to where the food is that you're feeding them for the winter. My, for example, my chickens, they free range most of the time. However, um, especially when early winter starts and throughout these next few months, I they will not be free ranging as much because I won't have any grass for them. I'll, it's going to kill all of the bugs and everything basically around here. And they're not going to have a lot of food. So I feed them now in the evenings in the coop, which draws them to the coop. Well, they would go to the coop in the evenings anyway, as you know. But 
We have other livestock, cows, goats, sheep. By putting their food out the same time every single day, they're going to know to come up to the barn and come in from the pasture. And this is really going to help you when the snowy weather starts because uh, we have had our pasture, it's fairly large, and we get a lot of extreme weather out here being in the middle of nowhere. So we don't have any other houses to block the snow and our winds are just crazy like straight line winds and they can make some really big snow drifts out in our pasture against the fence. Well one year we had a goat that got stuck out there. I guess there was some stuff underneath the snow drift and this goat got stuck like in a snow drift. Well, by feeding your animals and by them knowing where the food is, whenever it gets cold, they're not going to feel like they want to run around the pasture and go and get food. Now, you're going to have a few crazy ones that are still going to do that. I'm not going to lie. But for the most part, your animals are going to want to stay up close to the barn, which is going to leave you with not having to go out and track them down and make sure they're safe and okay because they're going to want to stay close to where the food is. Taking care of your pasture in early winter is a pretty simple and easy job. Just checking your fence line and ensuring your animals are safe from the heavy snows and the bad weather and that they know exactly where to get their food from throughout the cold months. Share your thoughts with me. What are some other homesteading tasks that you have designated to the early winter months? I would love to know your tricks and your tips Please leave me videos, photos, and comments down below. Also, this is a series of winter tip videos, so be sure to stay tuned throughout this week and next for the rest of my homesteading task winter activities. I hope that the way I break down and do things on my homestead helps you what to do to your orchard in early winter. If you've been following along with these early winter tip videos, welcome. Today we're going to talk about what to do to your orchard at this time of year. We know that there are really four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. However, on the homestead, we have so many tasks that I like to break my seasons up into three parts the beginning, the middle, and the end. And each part of those seasons has their own set of designated tasks. This helps me so I do not get overwhelmed and frustrated and have 100 projects going and I can't finish any of them. So today I'm gonna to share with you my tips for what I do in the orchard in early winter every year at this time. One of the main things that I do is collect ash from our wood burning stove and our fireplace to use in the orchard. Ash will provide your plants with potassium. Ash is really good for your plants and I save as much as I can of our ash. Actually, I, ash is like a precious commodity around our homestead. I save all of the ash. I use it for my chicken dusting bath. I use it in my flower gardens um, whenever it's fall and winter. I use it in my garden and I use it in my orchard and I use it all over the place. This is our ash bucket that we keep in here by the fire. And we will scoop out the ashes and fill up our bucket whenever it gets full. Now, whenever our bucket gets full, all I do is simply walk outside to the next area that I'm gonna place ash on and I start to sprinkle it around. Now, in the orchard, you wanna watch out. You do not wanna put these ashes directly next to the tree trunk. You wanna put them around the outside of the tree. And this is my roll of thumb. I start spreading my ash around the tree wherever the branches end. So if I have, I have apple trees and pear trees and peach trees and nectarine trees and plum trees and cherry trees. I don't care what kind of trees you have. I hope you have all the trees. I, you're going to look at your trees. You're going to have a tree trunk and then your branches are going to come out. 
wherever the ends of your branches are, that's where I spread a circle ring of ash around every single tree. The other thing that we do on our homestead in early winter in our orchard is check our rodent and deer protection. We have a few traps set up and we have a few different types of deer repellent around our trees. And so we will use this time to go and check to make sure that all of that is in working order and that basically we're good to go for the rest of the season. There's not too much more that we do throughout the rest of winter in the orchard besides these things. We might repeat them a few more times, but just making sure that our deer protection and our traps for animals make it through the winter unscathed and that our ashes from our fireplace are being spread around to give um, potassium to the soil and help with production for our fruits. It's really all that we do. So the orchard at this time of year is super simple. It's only going to take you a little bit of time to get it done. And this is one chore that I don't stress about because it's super simple and easy. Stay tuned for my future tip videos on early winter. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about what to do to your barn. Don't get overwhelmed with all these things on your homestead. Break it up. Find what works for you. Create a schedule and get it done. Share your thoughts with me. What are some other things that you do to your orchard in early winter? I would love to see the videos of your orchard, photos, leave your comments, and all of that down below. What tasks need to be done to your barn in early winter? The wind is cold, the ground is starting to freeze, and early winter is definitely upon us. There are two things that my homestead really focuses on during this time, which is our barn and our woodlot. However, it is very, very easy to get overwhelmed with all of the things we have to do on a homestead. Even though there are really four seasons, I break each of them into three parts. You have the early and the middle and the late. Breaking seasons up into three sections allows me to break my tasks up more evenly throughout the year so I don't get overwhelmed. So let's talk today about the early winter chores that I do in the barn. Right now in early winter, this is when I do my thorough check of all my animals. If you haven't moved them in from the pasture to the barn yet, it's time to start doing that. I like to feed them every day at a certain time so that way they know to come in and whenever they come in, I will shut the gates and the doors behind them so that way during heavy snowfall, they don't go out and wander around the pasture and get hurt. It's crazy, I know, to think that an open pasture with nothing but trees and bushes and grass and snow could do something to injure an animal, but snow can build up on those bushes and become big snow drifts, and your animals are not going to know that there's a bush under there. And I have actually had goats go out and get stuck in big snow drifts in debris underneath of them that I've had to go out with garden snippers and rescue in the middle of winter. So if you have not already, go ahead and bring your animals up to the barn and secure them in for winter. And I just let mine out on the days that are good at this point. By a thorough check, I mean I check each one of my animals basically from head to toe to make sure that I don't need to do a vet visit. Spending time with our animals every day, we typically see if there's an issue or a problem. However, how often do we actually pick up every single chicken that we own and inspect it? Me, hardly ever. Only whenever it's built into my homesteading routine do I do this. 
if I went out and picked up 50 chickens every day and checked on them or even once a week, that's a lot of time. How am I going to catch 50 chickens for one thing? And another thing, I have other chores to do. By scheduling an early winter, a good check of your animals, it's very convenient. They have just come in to the barn for the winter season and the winter months. And you can go out, they're all in one area. You don't have to chase anyone. You don't have to try to catch anyone. They're all right there, easy for you. So inspect, look at, see how your animals are doing and if they need any medical attention, now is the time to find that out. With the weather the way it is right now, it's freezing and it gets cold quick. As soon as that sun starts to set, those temperatures start to drop. So my suggestion to you with having animals in the barn is to start feeding them a little earlier. It is not fun to put a big old huge coat on, put your boots on, strap everything so you can get down to the barn whenever it's dark and cold and snowing and yucky outside. So what I do, I used to feed my animals every day after dinner because I would bring them the scraps. I no longer do that at this time of year. Starting in early winter, I will feed them a few hours earlier. I will either feed them before dinner or even maybe an hour before dinner, just depending on the weather and how it looks outside. It's not comfortable to be traipsing around your homestead taking care of all these animals whenever it's 20 degrees or 10 degrees or 5 degrees. So keeping that in mind and doing things a couple hours earlier than you normally would each day is going to make life a lot easier for you. And talking about animals, our chicken coop is attached to our barn. That being said, anything that I do basically with the chicken coop, I kind of tie in with what I'm doing with the barn since it's all one big building. In the winter, if your hens are still laying, your eggs are gonna freeze. So my tip to you is your early winter barn maintenance, part of it needs to be to go out and get your eggs quickly. I will do egg gathering at least three times a day during this time of year, but at this time of year, their water is freezing anyway, and so I'm having to go down to the barn and change out water for my animals throughout the day to make sure that they have access to fresh, clean water that's not frozen. So me gathering these eggs throughout the day is also like killing multiple birds with one stone because I'm doing multiple tasks and multiple things for my animals while I'm down there. Early winter is another good time to check your rat, possum, raccoon traps, whatever traps you currently have out, fox traps. We have foxes around here. So it's a good time to go around and check your traps and make sure that everything is still safe from the rest of your animals since your animals are going to be spending more time in the barn. We like to double check all of these things to make sure our, no one's going to get to any poison we have out for um, our rats or our mice that are in every barn and that our live traps that we have for the animals or the predators that are go down there are safe and secure and they're in places where our other animals cannot reach and get to. So use this time to go down to your barn, check on all of your traps, make sure that everything is safe and secure for your animals, start doing things a little earlier in the day than you normally would because the temps are getting ready to drop to be colder in the evenings and it's easier to just avoid that altogether. I would much rather be sitting inside by the cozy fire at five o'clock in the evening thinking about what I'm getting ready to make for dinner, knowing that my animals have just been fed all of their food, their prepped corn, all the stuff that's going to keep them cozy all evening long as well, instead of being down there freezing cold. Your barn and your woodlot are the two things that you want to focus the most on in early winter. While we've talked about how each season kind of has three different parts, 
I just want to share with you all of the things that I do in early winter to the different areas of my homestead. So that way you can help to create your own schedule of things that work for you on your homestead. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about what we do to our woodlot. Share your thoughts with me. I would love to know everything that you do to your barn in early winter. What do you do to get ready and make sure that everything is safe and secure to move forward into the colder months? Please share your videos. I would love to see videos of your barns and your animals. Photos and comments, put it all down below. What chores to do on your woodlot in early winter? We just finished with the hustle and the bustle of spring and fall. And with early winter finally upon us, it is nice to have a little bit of a break from all of those seemingly endless chores of canning and preserving and fermenting and gardening and maintaining all of these things that are growing on our homesteads. I really welcome early winter whenever it comes. As much as I love spring and summer and growing, I'm definitely ready for a break by now. Today, I wanna to share with you my tips and tricks for early winter in our woodlot. And I say early winter because we can get very easily overwhelmed with everything that needs to be done on a homestead. While we do have four seasons, I typically break them up into three sections. You have the early, the middle, and the late part to every season. Doing this allows me to break my chores down in a more organized manner so that way I feel like I can get everything done in the homestead that I need to do throughout the year. If I don't break things down like this, I very easily get overwhelmed. That is something that I would love to avoid for you. So let me share with you all of my tips and tricks for the things that I do in early winter. So please stay tuned for this week and next for daily videos of things to do on your homestead in early winter. If you're like us and you live in kind of a frozen dry climate, then your homestead is pretty much on autopilot right now. It's a great reprieve from all of the busyness that spring and fall brought to us. This gives us a perfect opportunity to focus on different things of our homestead that basically go neglected throughout the other months. And one of the main things that my homestead does right now is focus on our woodlot. The time is now to thin, prune, burn debris, cut down trees, harvest timber, and create some firewood and kindling to use in our stoves and fireplaces. My family and I, we like to cut down trees right around now and then let them sit until next year. So the trees that we are harvesting on our woodlot this fall and early winter are trees that have we have previously cut down and have been drying, laying out in the summer and the spring months. It's very easy for us to cut them up and harvest timber and have firewood for our stove and our fireplace. And at the same time, we're cutting other trees down and stacking them and bringing them to a place where they can dry throughout the next year to be ready to be used for the following winter. I also pick up bark and branches, anything that's falling off of the trunks of the trees as we're cutting it, and I put them in this big box next to our wood pile. And when the box gets full, I kind of fold it up and go put it in an area in the barn, and then I just keep making all of these boxes or buckets or whatever container I have handy full of all of these pieces of kindling. My husband will go out with an axe on a piece of wood and he will chop it and make kindling. I am really not that handy. I cannot control an axe like he can and I am too afraid I'm going to chop off my finger. So 
what I do is I, as we are cutting up these trees out of our woodlot and making these burn piles and these brush piles, I am pulling out choice pieces of kindling for me to start fires with. You would be surprised how much kindling that I actually can get from just foraging around on the woodlot. This saves my husband from having to chop wood when it's freezing cold outside. This saves my fingers from being afraid that I'm going to chop them off. And I have boxes and boxes and boxes of kindling just ready to be used at a moment's notice. Now pretty much that's all you're doing on the wood lot. And even though it sounds really like not a bunch of stuff, pretty small, minuscule, you're just kind of gathering firewood and kindling and cutting down some trees. But at the beginning of this video, you heard me say that your woodlot is one of your biggest focuses throughout this time of the year. It might, those things that we were talking about might sound little, but after you go out there and you start cutting down trees and you start picking up kindling and you start axing you some firewood, it is a big time consuming job. So, Use this time of the year whenever all of the green is dead, clear some underbrush, do some burn piles. Yes, you can still burn things at this time of year, just be super careful. And get more firewood ready for your fireplace. Be sure to stay tuned for the rest of this week and next week for daily early winter tip videos. I hope these help you to create your own schedule for your homestead. Do not get overwhelmed with all these things that we have to do every day. Do not feel like there's endless amounts of tasks because there is. Instead, take a tip from me and break it up. Break your seasons up into parts. Break your tasks up per part of the season. And get all the stuff done. You'll be surprised how easy it actually is. Share your thoughts with me. What are some other things that you do to your woodlot in early winter? I would love to know your rotation of cutting down trees versus whenever you chop them up for firewood. Do you have any tips for stacking your lumber? My husband and I just used two long um, trees that we cut down that are skinny on the ground and then we just pile our lumber up in like a little triangle above it. So tell me your tips and tricks. I would love to hear all about your woodlot in early winter. Please leave your comments, your videos, and your photos down below. Today's quick tip is all about winter tool shed maintenance. We're not normally using our tools during the winter months and the tools that we do use are year-round tools. So right now in early winter and winter in general, it is the perfect time for you to do your tool shed maintenance, or as my husband likes to call it, his tool crib. Take inventory of your tools, clean up, put everything away where it belongs, take an inventory, see what you're missing, see what you need, and go out and get those items. Maybe you are doing all of your cleaning and you realize that you have a tool that's in need of repair. I would go ahead and use these cold months when you're not necessarily using those items and make the repairs now. Also, sharpen your blades, the blades on your saws and your chainsaws, any blades that you have, I would take this time to sharpen all of your blades. Really, winter is a great time to clean, organize, repair, and replace things in your tool shed that you're not currently using. Tell me, do you clean your tool shed? And if so, when do you do that? Do you do a spring cleaning or a winter cleaning? I would love to hear your comments. Please leave them down below. Thank you for watching today's video on Homesteading Farm Life. Please share this video with your friends and click that thumbs up button below. If you're interested in homesteading and farming, why don't you join our journey by clicking the subscribe button and then choosing the little bell icon so you never miss a video. Maybe you're interested in more than just watching homesteading videos. Maybe you want to make some homesteading friends. Why don't you join me on Facebook in my homesteading Facebook group. 
I will include a link to the group down in the video description.